In anime, especially in Shonen Jump, it is rare to find a truly weak MC in their own verse. There are those who obtain power, which they must work to control and master in the case of Asta and Deku, or those who don't fully use the power system of their anime, but still put up reasonable fights due to other unnatural factors like Itadori. Then you also have semi-prodigies, and characters with natural skill that just needed a little bit of polish, in the case of Gon, or something more realistic like Hinata or Asagi. Basically, all the anime with head-to-head -head battles to some degree allow the MC to adapt quickly and become competent, usually within a short amount of time. But World Trigger is very different. I've made three other World Trigger videos before this one, and in the about 25 minutes of me talking about this anime, I have mentioned the MC in maybe two sentences. I haven't talked about him not because he is terrible, but because this anime is so multifaceted that there is just so much to talk about. So this video will be dedicated to one Osamu Mikumo. Unlike a lot of anime, this verse has a cap on how much power someone can gain. Everyone is born with a certain level of Tryon, this world's life energy, and you can only raise it a tiny bit with training, but it is a negligible amount when it comes to combat. So we have an MC who, no matter how hard he trains, will fall behind basically everyone else he fights, or fights alongside. So how does he overcome this? This is how to write an actual weak MC. Because everyone in this verse is either born with high tryon or they aren't, there isn't a clear overarching status imbalance based on the family you are born into or anything. The characters gain their positions based solely on their own skill, so our main character, Mikumo, was always destined to be a nobody, so why did he choose this path? As far as protagonists go, Mikumo is as righteous as they come. His connection to Border stemmed from his tutor, who was investigating illegally. He wound up missing going to an alternate dimension, tasking Mikumo with looking after after his younger sister, leading our MC down the path of being an agent. Now that we know his backstory and motivations, let's talk about how he improves throughout the anime. A big reason why I think Mikumo is well written and World Trigger as a whole is well written is that there is no significant breakthrough moment for Mikumo. He doesn't suddenly become super useful. Even being more strategic than most, a lot of his plans don't work out the way he wants them to. But this leads to an interesting and realistic growth of a character who has to come to terms with the fact that pretty much everyone around him is better than he is and now he has to navigate that as the leader of his squad. I'm going to go through each of the little moments that slowly build Mikumo up more and more as a main character. His first push outside of normality and into the spotlight is when an unexpected event occurred in which a Tryon soldier invaded his school. This led to Mikumo activating his trigger to fight said Tryon soldier, even though it was against border regulation. In the end, Mikumo is saved by Yuma Kuga who is a neighbor. The general public believes that neighbors are the Tryon soldiers, but actual neighbors are humanoid and the things that they fight are just puppets. Because Yuma doesn't want to be found out, Mikuma must take responsibility for saving the day. With his unauthorized use of a trigger outside of combat training, some in Border believe he should be tossed out. In the end, with the endorsement of one of the best agents, Mikumo is promoted to B-Rank. I think the promotion to B-Rank puts our main character in a very difficult to navigate position. As on one hand, you have Yuma, a humanoid neighbor that Mikumo has taken upon himself to protect from border. Even still, this decision goes against the organization he has been working diligently to be a part of. And if they ever find out, he doesn't know what he would do. Harboring Yuma alone against an actual militarized organization could be considered stressful, but he also has a lot of inner conflict regarding his current predicament. Now that he is in B rank, more is expected of him. However, he isn't the one who took down the Tryon soldier. This weighs on him as he doesn't feel as though he deserves to be in this spot for something Yuma did, and he struggles with trying to become strong enough to be worthy of the position given to him. What's more, there are agents within who believe correctly that he isn't the one who took down the Tryon soldier. Not long passes before Mikumo is put through more emotionally. The little sister of his tutor and his childhood friend possesses an amount of Tryon far beyond anyone else at border. This makes her a a prime target of Tryon soldiers, whose primary goal is to capture people and take them back to their world to use as a fuel source. Learning this makes Mikumo's job of protecting her that much more difficult. And to spice it up even more, this is when Yuma is targeted for assassination by an A-rank squad of some of the strongest people in Border. I'm going to skip ahead a bit and focus on the aftermath of Yuma being found out as a neighbor and the forming of the series' main squad, Tamakoma 2. There are a lot of very interesting character interactions between Yuma and Mikumo at this time as well. 
I'm going to talk about Yuma a little bit and why it is Mikumo who becomes the leader and not him. Yuma finds out the fate of his father's friend, the person he has been looking for, and the entire reason he came to Earth, that fate being death, which leads Yuma down a very dark train of thought. Yuma, who feels responsible for his father's death, had hoped that this friend would be able to reverse the black trigger process and restore his father back, leaving Yuma to meet the fate he should have from the very beginning. Yuma sees his inevitable death approaching and he contemplates just doing nothing until his clock expires. But with the help of a wise future seer and Makumo, Yuma decides to stay and help the two achieve their goal of making it on an away mission to the neighborhood. With the trio now a squad, a leader must be picked. The most obvious choice is Yuma, a very skilled fighter who has the most experience working alongside others and the most knowledgeable of the enemies ahead. However, because of his trauma, he elects Makumo to be the leader. Yuma, with his side effect to tell if someone is lying, truly believes that Makumo is a great guy and wants to help him the most that he can. What holds him back from taking charge is that Yuma always followed his father's orders, and the one time he didn't... This is explicitly shown in his relationship with Replica, always asking if his next action is correct, while knowing Replica is just going to tell him to follow his heart. For someone as skilled as he is, Yuma doesn't trust his own leadership abilities, and the idea that the leader's orders are absolute follows him throughout the entire series. Because of Yuma's inability to be a leader, Makuma must step up to the plate. This was a slow and natural buildup of Makuma as a character, going from being a C-rank nobody with aspirations and nothing else, to having to be a leader in a B-rank squad, shouldering the protection and hopes of his fellow members. But so far we have only talked about his emotional progression. I think it's high time to switch gears and talk about the way in which he outsmarts his opponents and the way he thinks to acquire the means to do so. After joining Tamakoma, the three are trained by more senior members who are all A rank. Makumo at first does basic training and his mentor really struggles to figure out a way to strengthen our MC. This leads Makumo down his own path of self-improvement where he reaches the idea that helps him out throughout the rest of the series. That is, to learn how to be a shooter as well. This at first doesn't seem like the biggest of improvements as his tryon is hardly sufficient enough to muster a decent attack. Still, when combined with his battle IQ, he is able to take a single draw out of over 20 matches against one of the top A rank attackers. This, while small, shows growth and strength compared to his episode 1 self. He will continue to grow steadily, but let's jump over to something he had since the beginning, his intellect and talk about how he begins to outsmart his enemies. There are multiple instances of Makumo coming up with plans and being his squad's tactician, but I want to talk about the single most impactful in the entire series, which changed the trajectory and tone of the whole anime. This is, of course, during the after crater invasion in which Makumo was the only person concerned for the C-rank recruits, which his squad mate, Chika, was a part of. Because of this, he was put right in the middle of their plan to abduct all the C-ranks. While trying to get Chika and the other C-ranks to safety, the after crater leader realizes the amount of tryon that Chika has and focuses all his energy on capturing her. This results in a chase from Mikumo, who carries a tryon cube to Chika as he rushes to get her back to border. What ends up happening is Mikumo is pushed to his limit, losing Chika and also Replica. But something not even the watcher knew was that Mikumo had switched out the cube. How the author handles Mikumo is one of my favorite parts of the anime. There are no times when she suddenly gets the MC power boost and can win against his opponent in pure strength. Now, those moments can be very fun in shonen, but you have to mix it up sometimes. It isn't like this anime lacks that either. At the same time of Makumo's struggle, we have Yuma facing a veteran black trigger user and beating him with both brain and brawn following a much more shonen type of fight. This isn't the biggest brain play for Makumo by far, it is only because the watcher isn't in on it that it is a big deal but it dramatically changes the story as now Replica is gone. A Tryon soldier left to Yuma by his father and someone that Yuma thought of as a friend. Loser! You're a loser! Are you feeling sorry for yourself? Well, you should be, cause you are dirt! You make me sick, you big baby! Makumo feels responsible for the loss of Replica, but Yuma knows that Replica did it because he wanted to and tries to console Mikumo by telling him that Replica is still alive. The more important thing that really just tacks on that pressure is the fact that because Border is a government agency, it has an entire PR team to save face to the public in order to keep funding and approval to protect the world. So in order to do so, they throw a single border agent under the bus who went against the rules, all while he was still in the hospital no less. Makumo steps up and defends his actions, giving away border secrets like being able to go to the neighborhood, and promises to get everyone back, becoming both a public enemy and a thorn in the side of border all in one statement. From here on out, the anime is mostly a tournament arc, which is nice to see as every named character gets a moment to shine. As someone who likes character driven anime, this is a giant plus for me. 
Makuma stays standard for a lot of these battles, save for the strategies he comes up with for Yuma to execute. So I want to move on to the final bit of the combat growth he gets. After more interpersonal conflicts with members at border, Mikumo finds himself against a giant hurdle as a top b rank squad and a squad that they have to fight and do well against don't believe in their goal of the away mission. So they become a strong force of opposition and after a humiliating loss where he did absolutely nothing, Mikumo thinks it is finally high time he learned something more to get stronger. Within border, there's an agent very similar to Mikumo, with a tryon only slightly higher than his. Although he lacks the athletic prowess that she has, it is clear that out of everyone in Border, her advice and her opinion would be the most beneficial to him and that it is. The new skill he picks up is called Spider, a simple option trigger that doesn't consume much Tryon, which allows the user to send out a wire connecting two points. Some can be harder to see than others and can even be used to set trip wires. Katora utilizes it in both by using it to enhance her already high speed, but also to set traps that stop her opponent's movements. Mikumo is unable to move like her, so instead he uses it to set up advantageous areas in the battlefield that he and Yuma use. In the match where he debuted this technique, Mikumo was able to get a few points of his own and significantly helped Yuma to be able to take on multiple people at once. What I love about this series is that everyone in the anime adapts to different combat styles. In this case, since it was the first time people saw it, Mikumo was able to get a hefty amount of value from it. But afterward, people instantly became cautious, targeting him first before he could set up zones for his team. So, while being able to help him win more battles than before, it didn't dramatically increase his fighting power. Same with learning how to be a shooter. Each one gave Mikumo a little boost, but neither made him a considerable threat. Lastly, I want to talk about where the anime ended and the final of the B-Rank Wars, because I think it perfectly visualizes the growth made by Mikumo, from being a C-Rank loser to leading one of the top squads in Border. I mentioned earlier about the opposition to Mikumo and his squad about going on the away mission and how they aren't ready yet. The entire final season builds on this, as this B-Rank 1 squad is the final match and our team must overcome them to reach the away mission. The entire match is a treat, both in terms of strategies but also animation. The focus though is the final moment of the match, but it comes down to our three main characters and the three squad members of the B-Rank team. Mikumo cooked up an entire bluff just for this showdown and it paid off big time. You see, Asteroid is the default shooter trigger. It packs the most punch, but it shoots in a straight line. However, the other shooter, known as Hound, blocks onto Tryon signatures and tracks it. Most people can recognize the difference between the two when in a duel by the size of the Tryon cube, as Asteroid is bigger. But because of his low Tryon, no one was the wiser that he had been using Hound the entire match with the tracking turned off, leading to their ultimate victory. Mikumo was just an overly ambitious kid who wanted to make his tutor proud by becoming strong enough to protect his childhood friend. By freak circumstances, he ended up in the spotlight and was forced into a hard position both in terms of loyalty and strength. Loyalty to border versus morals and lacking the strength to take the actions he thought necessary in protecting Yuma and Chika. Mikumo is still by far one of the weakest characters in the anime, but by his wit and the trust built up with his team, knowing that he can count on them to help secure victories, and them knowing that he can lead them there, it is just a nice story of someone not falling into power like many others, instead using what they already have and building up to something greater by their own will. Mikumo is a weak MC, but that doesn't mean he is a bad MC. Oh Jesus Christ, will you fucking shut up? Nobody gives a shit! How did- Am I right? I'm- I'm not wrong. This is fucking dog shit. Yeah, yeah, you keep- got, No one cares. I can't.